Welcome back to my Solidity course. Name is Alex Louis, part-time adjunct.com. Today what I want to show you is how to interact with your smart contract from the client side. If you haven't done so already, please watch my video on how to deploy a contract to the Robson test network. That will show you and get you the address of the contract that we're going to be using today. It'd be a good exercise for you to try to do that yourself and then come here and interact with that contract. And then, then you can only write your own contract and you can interact it with it via client. So a couple things that I'm going to go that we're going to need today is we're going to need to have MetaMask installed. We're going to have to have a contract that's been deployed to the Robston network. And we're also going to need a web server to deploy our client code. Although you can run your HTML files and JavaScript on a browser from your local directory, MetaMask prevents you from accessing its Web3 injection. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Where, long story short, it will prevent you from actually using your Ethereum account to pay for gas from MetaMask as long as you are running your JavaScript locally. So what you need to do is get a type of simple server where you can upload your JavaScript files to. You could also run this on Visual Studio if you were trying to debug code because that uses IIS Express. So just a word of warning. So when I am going to edit the code, I am not going to be running it on the browser directly from my file system, but I will be uploading to an FTP site and then running it on the web. So let's get started and let's look at some code. In continuing, we have a simple HTML page which lists my head text and a button. And if we look at the code for the front end, is we will have uh, just included bootstrap CSS off the CDN. And we're, we have this button where I created a set professor function, JavaScript function. And then below that, we have our includes, which include our Web3 JavaScript includes jQuery, which is not really needed, but uh, I'll include it anyway. And then my index.js, where all my business lot, we call it business logic, where all the logic of getting out a contract in Robson will be placed in. So all my code I'm going to write in index.js. And just to mention, we need the Web3 library so that we can interact with our smart contracts on the, on the Ethereum blockchain. The other thing that you're going to need is MetaMask. If you see on my browser, I have MetaMask installed. I have it set to the Robson test network because that's where we where I deployed my professor contract and I'll show you that in a minute. And we also need some ether. So if you do not have any ether, what you need to do is get some ether from the test faucet. And I'll show you how to do that real quick, but I've sh I've shown that previously on my previous video on how to deploy a contract. So all you would have to do is just click on buy and then you click on this link here and it will take you to the actual test faucet page where you would just click on request one ether from the faucet and it would create a transaction and you should get back some ether on your ethereum account. So right now I have three ether I would expect that I would get four if it were only that easy on the production account. <laughs> so if we go back to the code, that's pretty much your HTML page, what, what it consists of. Now we, we have to get to the actual nitty gritty, which is the index.js, which is all, where all my logic is. So if I click on the index.js, we're going to go over this piece by piece. 
So the first thing that we need to do is get an instance of the Web3 library. And the Web3 library is just what we are including here in the script source. So we get an instance of that. The other thing we need to check is if MetaMask has injected a Web3 provider, its Web3 provider, which is MetaMask. And if it has, then I get the current provider and then I'll write it out to the console. And we're going to see an example of this in a minute. Otherwise, if we don't, if MetaMask did not inject its Web3 provider through the browser, then that means that we need a new provider. And y this other else statement actually handles would, would handle the logic to actually go out to the Robson network, the API, and you'd have to pass in your API key. But then this gets a little more f complicated because you would have to sign all their transactions. And there's code out there to do that. It's just a bit more involved. So if it were me, I would be writing dApps where you have to have MetaMask installed because then you you deviate or sway away from the problem of well what if they don't well if they don't then you just don't show them the dap and that could be your else statement you could say redirect them to another error page and say you must have metamask installed and i've seen a lot of daps do that so it's not uncommon so that's basically what this logic says and then what i do is then i write some log messages to say if am I connected and then I will write out my account address from that's coming from MetaMask. And remember the Web3 got injected from MetaMask. So if MetaMask wasn't installed then this would actually be false this condition and we'd have to go to the else. And I'd, I put in to do because that you can you can go an alternate route and have an API key but then the problem with having the API key is that it's it's exposed on the browser so anybody can just take your API key and make many calls to the Infura Robson or any any network for that matter so it's it's okay to test it but I, I wouldn't go this route actually if we we're going to production <laughs> After that, we need uh, an ABI, and that's pretty easy to get. So the ABI is basically your interface to your contract, and it's just a JSON file. And what you need to do is if you were doing, so for my professor contract that I just that I deploy on the previous video, this is my contract address. So if I take this address right now, and I go to my browser, and I go to the Robson testnet and I look it up and you can see that it has been deployed and this is the, and this is the uh, the address the contract address right here because I deployed it to the live network I'm not running anything locally I'm not running any test RPC or anything I'm actually gonna go we're going out to the Robson network that there's a particular node out there so the way that we interact through a node is through the MetaMask now, if we go back to the code, we have the contract address, but you really don't have a way to get the ABI. At least I found the only way to get your ABI is through Remix. So if I was going back, I would probably get my, my contract pasted into Remix and then I would click on details and then if you see this line right here what I did is I just copied this I copied this directly into my JavaScript file so if we go back that is this and that's my JSON ABI so it's my interface to my contract so this basically says what functions you can call variables available and all that and you'll see that in a minute we declare a professor contract variable and we say that we, we use the web3 provider 
and say and instantiate our ABI. So this is our interface to the contract. And then now that we have the ABI, then we will locate the contract at this particular address on the Robson network. Because by this point, we are already connected to Robson. And now we have an instance of the contract. And then if you log the contract, you're going to see on the browser, you're going to see the functions that are available to us. Then I created three variables, which I'm going to call, which I'm going to use to actually set the values of my professor contracts. So if we look at the professor contract, there's pretty much two, just two functions that I'm calling. It's the set professor, which is going to cost me some gas. And I pass in three variables. And I'm setting these variables to my state variables up here. And then I call the get professor, which returns my state variables. So if I set the value, then I can, after it's, it's written to the blockchain, I can pretty much get that value from this contract, and it should have the updated value. And that's what I'm going to show you here. This set professor function is what I'm calling on the front end on click. So when we click, we take the contract instance that we had, right? That's already pointing to our contract. We call the set professor function, that's our actual contract, and then these param these are our parameters. So usually when you're going to call a function from a contract, the first x arguments are going to be your parameters. And then you're going to have another parameter which states what account you're going to pay this from. And by default, if we say web3.eth.accounts of zero, that's actually saying use the account from MetaMask the, at index zero. Because you could have more than one account on the network. And then this is the function that promises to return once we, once we write the value to the contract with these values because at this point it's going to actually go out to the contract to the blockchain and write this out when it writes it out this function is is a promise that says okay once you write it out then we're going to execute whatever's between this open bracket and this closed bracket which is called a promise and then because we've already at this point it's already written to the blockchain then we're actually going to now make another call to the blockchain to our contract calling the get professor function and for when you do a get for any function that you're going to write to the blockchain using web3 you always need a callback function and the way you do a callback function is pass in two parameters an error and a result result would be the result that you're getting back and then the error is any error that's been thrown and the syntax for this is just have a lambda operator and then open parameters, open par upper, open braces and close braces. And I just say, when you come back, okay, you're going to get professor. You're making me a promise that eventually you're going to come back. When you do come back, you're going to execute whatever's inside. If we get back an error, then we're going to write out to the console error, meaning something happened on our request. Could be that the the blockchain was down or something, a timeout error or something, whatever. If there is no error, then we're going to write out the result. So right now what I'm doing is I'm writing out Mike Louie and the value is 1, 2, 3. And that's pretty pretty much what I'm going to do for this call. So let's do that right away. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to upload these files to my to the web server because like I mentioned before, you can't run this code locally. You have to run it on on the site. So I just transferred my code and if we go back to our application, I'm going to refresh this. And I want to show you a couple things on the actual console. So now, if I go here, 
So these are the things that I am actually writing out to the console. So as you see, it says existing web, there's a provider object, and then it has the actual MetaMask that's been injected. And that's good. That means that MetaMask was able to inject that Web3 variable into our browser, so, and we have access to it. That means it's connected. This is our account address. So it detected that we are running under that 1F4 blah, blah, blah account. And then we get an instance of the contract, which has all our functions available. So that means that, that our contract is, is available for us to call. So now the last step is for me to actually click on the button and write to the blockchain and then get a value from the blockchain. So if I click on this, it's going to pop up the MetaMask notification because we are writing to the blockchain, so it's going to cost you gas. Because I have Ether, it's fine with me. So it's going to cost me seven cents to actually write a value to the blockchain, the three values, Mike, Louis, and I think it was I want one, two, three. So if that comes up, then you're good. So you click Submit, and then actually nothing's going to happen on the page, but you see that I wrote out what happened back. So I got Mike, Louis, one, two, three. I got it back. So I got the contract value written back. Right? So we called the get professor function. There was no error, and we got it back. So it worked. That's it for today. I am going to post a continuation of this video uh, on calling the get professor function maybe uh, at a later time, but I think that's enough for you guys to get started. And I will post this code on on GitHub and I will put it on the YouTube link. And this contract is pretty much public, so you can do whatever you want with it. So it has these functions here. You can use the ABI. You can improve on it. So what you could do as an exercise is you can create or add on to this contract and then go to Remix, get the ABI, deploy it out to the Robson network, and then point your code to the new address of the new professor contract and then see what you can do and manipulate. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you a lot. I hope this got you started with the client side code. We will I will post another video coming up on more Solidity stuff. So please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. If you have any questions, if you want to see this example in Angular or jQuery, let me know. I can always do that personally. You can watch me at parttimeadjunct.gmail.com or you can contact me through my website, uh, parttimeadjunct.com. Thanks and happy coding.